Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm delighted to bring you a character review on the new character added to Ever Crisis. That's right, guys, I'm going to be doing a review on Kate Sith. So I'm going to be looking at just a solo team that I've put together with him so far. Then we're going to go in, we're going to look at his individual weapons, where I think he kind of places in comparison to other characters in the game. And I'm just going to give you guys my honest thoughts on this character as a whole. At the end of the video, I am going to do all of my four star uh, or four star plus guaranteed ticket pulls for him, which is going to more or less guide me in the direction of whether or not I'm going to pull on his banner. So if I do get lucky on the four star guaranteed ticket pulls, then maybe I will actually go for the banner. But that being said, let's get into the review. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go back here. I did take Kate Sith to level 60 right here. Um, I didn't buy any of the paid memory packs at all, although I did use about 130 um, weapon voucher tickets in exchange. And through that, I was able to get Kate Sith all the way leveled up through the level 60 part of the grid. So I've bought in every single one of these nodes right here. And my first uh, limit break choice for him was dice. I think that the easiest way to build Kate Sith, especially if you're pulling on the banner, is to run him a non-elemental DPS character that's supporting through haste. Okay, now even though that haste is going to add magic attack up, Kate Sith's capacity and potential for non-elemental physical damage is absolutely insane. When you, if you happen to land a haste on him, the amount of damage is going to be astronomical with what this character can actually pull off. So all of the stats of my character is going to be basically up through the growth nodes all the way through level 60. I am stopping here. My intuition tells me that in week six, we are going to get the next 20 floors of the Cetra Tower. Please, that would be awesome. And then I also think they're going to break the level cap. To level 75 so the tower is going to allow us a bunch of different ways to get memories for characters which everyone is going to be needing soon and then the level cap hopefully will come with that same bomb event so that we can level up the characters very quickly like the last time so i don't think that it would be prudent to spend all your stamina like flash power leveling kate sith up to level 70 now i stopped at 60 and still that took like a good, a decent amount of stamina potions. So I'm just going to wait till week six drops and then go from there. All right. Now, if you go back and look at the actual character himself in the solo build that I made for him, which is over here. All right, let's scroll down and find him. Uh, this is what I have right here. I only have two weapons for Kate Sith, the yellow megaphone and this one right here, the marching horn. So it's not too much of a build, but this will give you an idea of the stats that he can get more or less around level 60. He's around 6.2K HP, 2.7K physical attack. We go into the back end, his HP is at three, physical attack three, he's got attack up to five. So all in all, he's got the boost physical attack here. And if we go into the back end, you can see I am slotting the Maritime Sword, the Stream Saber, and the Buster Sword here for some attack and HP. So. I think that, oh, also this is the gear voucher for his character, the marching jacket, um, which is definitely worth picking up, I think, for those of you that aren't going to be getting his banner costume. HP and physical defense is, is a fantastic set of our abilities um, in the game. It's going to definitely have its uses there. So yeah, my overall opinion of Kate Sith is that there, there's kind of two ways of looking at this. I, I do think that Kate Sith is far more of a whale friendly character than free to play pay players or even minnows. Dolphins are kind of like on the fence with it. Um, and the reason I say that has a lot to do with uh, his weapons that are currently available and kind of like what makes them up. All right, so what do I mean by that? Let's go down here to Kate Sith and 
I think that for the most part, there's a few weapons here that really stand out. You know, one in particular, and then the haste one on top of that. But for the most part, I feel like his kit is a little lackluster. Meaning that, you know, unless you are like building this yellow megaphone, which I'll get into this in a second. This is the weapon that has the insane damage potential. Um, unless you're like building this weapon and you get really lucky and you're building it past OB6 and on your way to OB10, it's going to be very hard to slot Kate Sith into a party. Basically, a lot of the other characters do his role better. He does have a water and peril weapon right here. Um, where is it? I think it's right here. It's not right there either. We shall find it though. Um, anyway, he does have the second water and peril weapon in the game other than Zack, which is definitely gives him hit some capacity. He does have two other imperils. I believe he has fire right here, which can decrease magic attack as well when landing a critical. Um, however, a lot of his builds are very RNG dependent. And personally, it's not really my style. I like things that, you know, are guaranteed more or less because then you can kind of like solidify a strategy around it. I don't want to be doing boss fights where I'm going into fights and then praying that he lands his crit and this buff goes off or this hit goes off and then rerunning bosses over and over just because I didn't get a crit or I did. That's not really my style. Um, but you know, if it is yours, like teach their own. And if you're having fun, that's what the point of this game is. Now let's go through, I'm gonna look at each of his weapons just briefly. Um, this weapon right here is his haste weapon and coupled with his costume with the buff debuff extension, this weapon is gonna do great. Um, however, early on it only has a duration of 10 seconds so like i said kate sith is more of a whale friendly uh character because you know they're going to be able to get this weapon to like ob6 some mega whales are going to get this to ob10 where the duration really starts to last right now this does increase magic attack so it's only going to be helpful for certain characters but the haste is going to be helpful for everyone now when you couple this with his yellow megaphone right here this weapon has absolutely insane potential, guys. All right, so this will deal 700% non-elemental damage at OB10. At OB6, it'll deal 590%, which is still gonna be really good, all right? But the, what's important to note here is also when he critical hits, it does times three damage. Now I'm gonna jump over to the data mine. For those of you guys that don't wanna see anything regarding the data mine, this is your warning because I'm gonna jump in here um when arcade sith or he always keeps changing his name where is vincent data our uh humble and awesome data miner forever crisis has added some uh some information regarding the damage of kate sith's weapon all right so they say that they've seen a lot of people miscalculating kate sith's crit damage for sonic meow right so it does 700 percent at ob10 the skill bonus from crit is three times base crit multiplier is 1.5 times crit damage percentage is added to this crit damage resist is subtracted so the skill damage when critting with no extra crit damage 700 percent times three times 1.5 equals 3150 percent so this weapon when it crits will be hitting for 3150 percent physical non-elemental damage at ob10 absolutely mind-blowing this character is insane and is officially the strongest non-elemental dps in the game however that is at ob10 and ob6 is still going to be powerful but i still think that going to ob6 on a banner is still whale territory unless you've really had a lot of crystals saved up and i think that at this point in the game where so many people drop their crystals on the limit break draws and tifa's banner on top of that i don't think very many people have extra crystals to pull. I could basically get through one stamp card on this. And if I get through one stamp card and I get one copy of the yellow megaphone and one copy of the haste weapon, it's not really going to put Kate Sith into a position where he can actually replace someone else in my team. Unless you're really getting him to OB6 on both of those weapons, when he really starts to come into his own, then he's gonna get an exponential power boost, right? All right, so let's look at the rest of this. Skill damage when critting with extra crit damage, 700% times 3 times 1.5, 3,150%. With the Arcanum, 
it has the potential of being 4,200% if he got an Arcanum costume for physical non-elemental damage. With a max possible crit damage build, it would have a po potential damage of 6,720%, guys. That is absolutely mind-boggling. It is more powerful than the level 5 Bahamut Mega Flare on an attack that can be done every 5 ATB. So let that sink in. This character's potential is insane. It is insane. But for most people starting off right now, and what we can likely get from the banner, it's going to be a long time before that insanity comes to play, right? Against a mob that resists 70% crit damage, it's still going to do 5,250%. All right? Also because someone will inevitably ask, physical potency is a separate multiplier. Just multiply the above final value by however much you like. Example, 15% potency at max CMD equals 3,150% times 1.5. All right. Thank you for joining Where is Vincent the Data's TED Talk. Thank you, my friend. I always appreciate what you do. You are a legend. All right. Now let's head back to the game. So that's what I'm saying. These two weapons, the capacity at OB6 to OB10 with these two make Kate Sith a A rank or actually purely S rank character. I do have a tier list coming out for all characters in the game. Kate Sith won't be in it because I made it before he dropped, but I am adding him in the description of the video. I will talk all I think about Kate Sith, kind of what I'm doing right now, and give him a tier list value. So for whales and players that are willing to spend on characters, he is an S rank character 100%. However, if you are not, if you are a free to play player or a minnow, or someone that's not really going to be able to get these weapons to high OB levels, I think that he's more of like a C rank character for now. A lot of these other things that he does, other characters do better. It's really going to be hard to replace him in your team. He has no Arcanum sets. He only has one buff debuff extension costume. You know, if we're going to bring in other Imperilers, they're going to normally have other things they can bring to the game because other characters, you know, have more weapons, costumes, etc. that give them more viability for content. Kate Sith is still lacking that. Now, his capacity for potential in the future is enormous. I think that if you do pull for him, he will eventually pay off, just maybe not right off the bat, right? Now, if we go through the rest of his weapons quickly, here we have, oh, this is the water uh, imperil weapon. So a water imperil weapon is always great, especially if you don't run Zack or you don't have black whiskers. So this is gonna give him a lot of viability just having this if you are running Kate Sith. So if you are pulling for him, I do recommend wishlisting this if you don't have black whiskers or you don't use Zack. All right, other than that, we have a AoE Blizzaga spell, nothing crazy here. Then we have an AoE Fyraga spell, also nothing crazy here. Let's go over to this one. This one increases physical defense for a single ally, kind of like Sephiroth's Torn Wing. Okay, it will have its uses here and there, but nothing crazy here, nothing out of the ordinary. Kind of like almost an event weapon. Here we have the Spinning Pouch. This one increases or decreases physical defense, okay, low, but when hitting a critical, it goes high. So technically you could go an entire fight where the max potency is low and it never goes high, which is why I don't really like you know, the RNG of him having to crit, right? Likely that's not going to happen in a fight. And in the future, we're probably going to get a costume that increases his critical hit chance, but we don't have that yet. Even at OB10, its max potency is low without a critical right here, which I'm not really sure how I feel about. All right, now going over here, we have the gold megaphone. This is his fire and peril weapon. When he crits, it does reduce magic attack. So that will have its niche, uh, potency right there. This could be a good one for fighting the Ifrit and Bahamut fight as Ifrit can do heat wave. Um, actually, you wouldn't even want to use this against Ifrit. You want to use ice breach against Ifrit. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure where this will come into play, but the magic attack break will be helpful when it works. But I don't know. It's just a little bit niche for me. I don't really like the all the criticals there that needs to activate. This is an interesting weapon. This is the battle drum. This can decrease magic attack. When, and when and then when hitting critical, also decrease physical attack. So for all of you guys out there that missed Kuja's Spirit Blade, okay, this is possibly a substitute for that. It is an AOE all enemies 
magic attack, physical attack, break. You will need a crit, so it does bring some RNG into it, but it's the first of its kind other than Sephiroth's sword. And at um, OB6, it will go to high on the second cast, which is essentially, I think, the same thing as Kuja Spirit Blade, or maybe Kuja Spirit Blade goes to high instantly. First cast at OB6. If we take it to OB10, it's still max potency mid on the first cast and then high. Oh, it does look like the magic attack break never goes past mid, but if you crit, the physical attack break can go to high. All right, so kind of an interesting one there. It will have its niches. It is nice to see this. I kind of wish he didn't have, even if this just went to mid at OB10, like mid, mid, but they didn't put the critical there. I feel like this weapon would have really been really good for him because a lot of people miss the Kuja Spirit Blade, and this could be one way that they can start, people can start to use Kate Sith and fill in those gaps. All right, last but not least, we have the Marching Horn. This one just raises the physical attack of a single ally, casts Regan as well. So kind of like Glenn's Pumpkin Lamp Post, although does it go to high? Yes, it does go to high. So yeah, a lot like Glenn's Lamp Post. So all in all, his kit is not really that crazy. Like I said, if I had to put him into a tier list for Dolphins and Whales, S tier, hands down, Kate Sith, once he starts to get more stuff, he's just going to get better and better and better. And we're going to start seeing some insane videos of damage of Kate Sith coming in the future. So for all you guys spending on Kate Sith, thank you for supporting Ever Crisis. And congratulations and have fun out there. It's going to be absolutely a blast seeing how much damage Kate Sith does. For all of us other people in the game that don't have the capacity to really make these weapons super strong right off the bat, um, I do think that Kate Sith is going to be far less usable right now. I think that it's going to be hard to put him into teams. You're going to have a lot of other characters, even though he has the capacity to be really strong in the non-elemental physical, you likely have a character that's going to be stronger right off the bat anyway, and provides more utility to the team just because they have more costumes and weapons. So I do think it's going to be hard to slot Kate Sith at the beginning, especially when that haste only has a 20% chance of activating. So yeah, I would say whale for whales, dolphins, S rank. For free-to-play players, minnows, light spenders, he's more like a C slash B rank, maybe at best. Like somewhere around, you know, Lucia, something like this. But I think that even Lucia might have more capacity right now for players than Kate Sith. All right, guys, that is going to conclude my character review. Now, now let's get to some fun stuff. So I have a bunch of Kate Sith tickets. Kate Sith guaranteed tickets right here. I have 60. I thought they were four star plus guaranteed tickets. I guess they're not. Um, I don't see anything right there. All right, guys. So we're just going to go through these right here. Kate Sith weapon guaranteed no matter what. Let's just cross our fingers and hope. If I get some good luck, maybe I will go in on this banner. I like the utility of being able to use all the characters, even if I don't have something that's super strong. All right, so hopefully we'll get some good things here. Um, I don't know how many copies of the yellow megaphone I have, but we'll just have to see, guys. All right, so I'm not going to make you watch through all of these, but we should watch the first one. Maybe it'll lead us off on the right foot. Come on, Cloud. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Crush it. Oh, bro. I don't think he wants Kate Sith to come join us, guys. I think he was bummed about how many fortunes he had to read in the gold saucer and how none of them made sense. And then the last one did make sense. And then he hated the fortune that came true from it. All right, so that's going to be the first pull right there for Kate Sith. Going into the second one, we do have six 10 draws right here, so 60 pulls. So hopefully we get something good here. I am pretty excited. All right, let's see here. All right, I'm gonna skip through that. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, let's go. All right, so our first gold, yellow megaphone, yellow megaphone. It's not a yellow megaphone, it's a crystal megaphone. I don't quite recall what that one does. So let's look at it. But honestly, I'm not really too interested in any of his other weapons. Yeah, not interested at all. All right, there's really only the two main ones that I'm interested in, the yellow megaphone and the haste weapon, which we can't even get right now. And then potentially that magic attack, physical attack break one. So that one's interesting to me. I have Zack's um, black whiskers at OB8, so I don't really need a water imperiler. 
That's a bummer. We didn't get any good pulls right there. All right. I'm going to draw again. Hopefully, we start to get some luck here, guys. All right. Let's see. I think we did get some copies of the yellow megaphone for free from the game. Um, I'm not sure. So, I might check after this. All right. Ooh, let's go. There's two of them right there. Come on. All right. So, this isn't a yellow megaphone because I already have it. All right, this is the silver megaphone. All right, what else do we have? Um, I thought we got, oh, we got another crystal megaphone and we got the one that lowers physical defense. Okay, well, nothing crazy right now, but we are getting something. All right, so we do, he will have some tiny utility for me, but nothing crazy. All right, here we go. I think I'm going to skip this one and then see what happens on the next one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, brutal. You know, I've had a lot of good luck recently, guys. I have. So it makes sense that it goes up and down. Either way, this is really, you know, I, I like to let the game decide what I should do, what I shouldn't do. And I feel like the game is telling me right now that skipping Kate Sith might be the best thing to do. Although I really like his costume. I feel like the potential for it is really good. So I still feel like I'm kind of on the fence with it, but I'm not getting any luck here, guys, as you guys can see. And I would want to get that megaphone at least to OB, um, I would want to get that yellow megaphone at least to OB6. And I think that I'm not even close to that right now. All right, so that looks like it's going to conclude all of my Kate Sith pulls. I don't have anything else here, guys, which is a little bit unfortunate. Let's go look at my yellow megaphone and see where it's at. All right, so we're just filter by character. We'll go to Kate Sith, confirm, filter. All right, yeah, so here's my yellow megaphone. It is at base five star, okay. Um, now, if I go and check my gift box, we might have some copies in here. I did think I had some somewhere floating around. All right, so let's check. We might have something here. Just so you guys know, you might have some copies of it too. Okay, so two yellow megaphones. So that's going to be OB1, OB2. All right, so I do have the yellow megaphone at OB2. However, even if I went the whole banner and didn't get another copy of it, I just feel like he wouldn't really be that useful for me. So as of right now, I'm going to be passing on Kate Sith. I might come back and change my, my opinion in the future. But that being said, if this video was helpful for you guys today, uh, and I hope it was, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future content to come. And if you're looking for an amazing Final Fantasy VII Discord full of awesome players, don't forget to check the link to join the Curseborn Discord in the description of every video I make. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.